Good evening, church. We're just going to begin with by praying. Father, we just um, commit this time to you, Lord. We thank you for um, what you're doing in our lives, Lord, and what you're doing within SNL, um, within the Hope for Freedom Society, God, at Hilland House and Revival House and the Glory House, Lord. We just thank you for all of those lives and all of those hearts that you are changing, God. We just, um, we're in awe of you, Lord. We just thank you for this opportunity to be able to worship God. And um, we just thank you for Jesus. In his name we pray. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You've been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You've been so, so He 
is jealous for me Love's like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath The weight of his wind and mercy When all of a sudden Unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glories And I realize just how beautiful you are And how great your affections are for me And oh, how he loves us so jealous for me love's like a hurricane i am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy when all of a sudden i'm unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glories and i realize just you are and how great your affections are for me and oh how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so and oh how he loves us so Make 
Jesus, that when we place our lives in your hands, God, that you come in and you change us from the inside out, God. You make us whole, Lord, and we just have to commit our lives to you. So this, just in this moment, God, I just um, give my heart to you, God, and just ask that you would just be the maker of my life. Um, in your son's mighty name I pray. Amen. everybody. Um, not walking the dogs today. I, uh, we're in Christmas Town, which is apparently uh, where I live. This is my family room. And uh, yeah, clearly not decorated by me. Um, just wanted to say uh, welcome to the ladies from uh, the Mission House. Uh, Dave told me just a little while ago that uh, you're now watching too. So welcome. And uh, hey guys from Helen. Uh, good to have you back. Uh, just wanted to uh, share a little bit about uh, uh, Christmas. Uh, now, now that I've uh, I got kids and a wife and uh, my life has significantly changed, Christmas is a lot of fun. When I was a young man, Christmas wasn't so fun. And I have to say, sometimes uh, 
I get a little mixed emotions sometimes at Christmas. I mean, I, I, I understand that, you know, it's the birth of Jesus. I'm grateful for that. But it also reminds me Christmas of some of the tough times I had when I was a kid. And uh, some, uh, some, what's the word I'm looking for? Not fallen, some, some expectations that never came true, I guess, or never, or, or just, just didn't uh, materialize, I guess, for lack of a better word. And uh, I remember a lot of Christmases, most of my Christmases as a young man, where we'd open our gifts and I'd just walk outside, spend the rest of the Christmas all by myself, or maybe with my brother, but primarily by myself, and, and a dog. I was lucky enough to have a dog and we'd go off in some adventure just to be out of the house because it was a mess. But thankfully for, uh, thankful, thankfully to Jesus and uh, my wife and my wife's family, Christmas is, uh, Christmas has come a long way for me. I, I love all this stuff here. I love the stuff here and there's more stuff, well, there's more stuff you can't see and I feel like I'm Santa sitting in his chair here with, with the the blanket and whatnot but uh yeah so uh for the ladies that don't, house and mission that don't know me um, or know who i am my name is steve bennett um i'm a dad married 30 years got two boys uh 16 and 19 and um well you see my dogs i got the two dogs and a cat and um and dave has asked me to speak from time to time to the men of helen because i I quite, I quite like visiting the house, and and I have a lot in common with the uh, the men in Helen, my past past wise, and uh, I enjoy visiting, and I enjoy, like I said before, I uh, I have a lot of, unfortunately for for the men in Helen and the, and for me, we have some some common uh, traits, and I'm sure uh, some of the things, uh, ladies in in uh, mission. We have some thing in co things in common that we probably don't wish we had in common. So anyhow, uh, welcome everybody, and uh, hopefully, that's my dog, you can hear him. Hopefully, uh, we all have a better Christmas this year. Uh, actually, I know I'll have a pretty good Christmas. Like I say, my, uh, Jesus has done some serious work with me, and uh, blessed me with a beautiful family, and wife, and just a pretty darn good life situation so uh, I can safely say my uh, through Christ I've been healed so we're reading out of the book of Mark chapter 15 amplified version I kind of like the translation here for uh, for this this part of the book and I just wanted to do a kind of a quick catch us up to speed what's going on so Jesus has been captured he's been brought to Pilate Pilate was the leader in Jerusalem, a Roman leader, and um, the priests are, have, have brought him to Pilate and saying that this, that this man wants to be king, and in doing say that they want him to be king, it's saying to the they're saying to the Romans that he wants to, he wants to be the leader of, of, of Israel, and hoping to somehow somehow. Um, get the Romans on their side. And so it's anyhow, Pilate asked Jesus, he says, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus says, yep, it's, it's as you say. And, uh, and, P and Pilate wasn't used to this. He was used to everybody begging and pleading for, uh, for I'm innocent. I'm innocent. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. So I, uh, because of Passover too, is the other thing, and because of Passover, uh, Pilate, Pilate would set uh, somebody free. And so he said to the people, he said, and the priest, he said, "Hey, I uh, because of Passover, I'm willing to set him, set set Jesus free." And they're and and they they whipped up the crowd into a frenzy, and they said, "No, uh, give us Barabbas." And Barabbas turns out to be uh, uh, he was a murderer, actually. For uh, he was a uh, uh, he was a rioter, and, and uh, he killed two people. Sorry, trying to. And uh, so again, so he, the, the Pilate says, "Hey." Who do you want me to set free? Do you do you want do you want me to set this Christ free? And they're like, no, give us Barabbas. He uh, he he's the one we want. We want you to crucify Jesus. So 
I'm just going to read from here. But it says, the chief priest stirred up the crowd to, uh, oh, sorry. That was, we're going to read from uh, chapter, sorry, verse 16. The soldiers led him away into a, into a palace that is called the Praetorium. And they called together the entire Roman battalion of 600 soldiers. They dressed him up in a, in a ranking officer's robe of purple. And after twisting together a crown of thorns, they placed it on him. And they didn't just place it on him. Other, other translations, it, 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 they pushed it onto his head and it dug into his head. And you could see the, and it caused him to bleed. Um, placed it on him. And they began saluting and mocking him. Hail, King of the Jews. They kept beating him on his head with a reed and split, spitting on him and kneeling in a mocking homage to him. And after they had mocked him, they took off his purple robe and put his own clothes on him, and they led him out of the city to crucify him. They forced into, the ser into service a passerby coming in from the countryside, Simon of, of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. Now, I was thinking about their, how, how they were saying he was... Uh, what they had on him and what Christ was guilty, worthy, worthy, what he was guilty and worthy of being nailed to the cross. I mean, nailed through his, they'd say others' hands or they did it in his wrists and then his feet, through his feet. What could he have possibly done? And, and they, they said he was, I mean, we, we read the Bible and it says, says that he, uh, he healed on 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 the on, on the Sabbath. He healed the man. And said, I'll, "I'll just read some of the things that he was guilty of." And by guilty, I don't mean like well, you'll figure out what I mean. He uh, he was guilty of loving his fellow man. He was guilty of healing on the Sabbath. The man who had a crippled hand, he he opened it up. He cast demons out of out of out of a young man. He raised a, multiple people from the dead. There was a little girl who died, and there was his friend Lazarus who died. He raised them from the dead. Christ had compassion. He cried. He had cried tears for his friends. And he healed he healed a lady who was so sick and she and from her with her medical problems that, that uh she was an outcast and uh deemed unclean from, from her, her, her um affliction. It's the Bible says that she had an issue of, of blood for years. And years and years and years, and could was not healed. I couldn't be healed, and just the touching of Christ's cloth. Uh, she felt the energy. She felt the 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 the, 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 the I was going to say energy. I, yeah, it's actually I even think it even says it in the Bible, and she was, she was healed. He saved a lady from being stoned, who was, who by a bunch of men who were calling her. I think they they called her a bunch of bad names. I honestly I can't remember what it was, but. They were going to stone her for, I think, being a harlot or something, being nasty. I don't know what the heck it was. But Jesus says, let you who is without sin cast the first stone. And so everybody starts looking at the ground and kicking their, kicking the, the rocks and walk away. So clearly, none were without sin. And uh, this is the one that uh, I remember uh, there was a man, he hung out in the graveyards and he no chain could contain him, and he would break the chains. He was demon possessed man, and Jesus looked at him and threw and he cast out the demons. That's what Jesus was guilty of. He made the blind see. He put mud in a man's eyes. He put his hands in a man's ears and helped him and made and healed him and made him hear, hear, and see. So, not things that you would uh, worthy of nailing somebody on the cross. Or, 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 you know, they weren't such humongous offenses. They, as a matter of fact, they were just com crimes of compassion. But they weren't crimes, is what I'm getting at. And so, so I wanted to, to I'm going to continue on to, uh, again, Mark 15, chapter 22, from the, again, from the Amplified uh, Translation. And then they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which is, is translated place of a skull. They tried to give him mixed wine with myrrh and uh, to dull the pain, and, and he would not take it. And they crucified him and divided up his clothes among him, 
among themselves, sorry, casting lots to see who would take what. It was at the third hour, 9 a.m., when they crucified him. The inscription of the accusation against him had been written above him, King of the Jews. They crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. And I wanted to read about that. Yeah, so Luke 23, 39. One of the criminals who had been hanged on the cross beside him kept hurling abuse at him. So he was, which is crazy. Christ is on uh, in the middle, criminal on one side, criminal on the other side. Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us from death. But the other one rebuked him saying, Do you not even fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? We are suffering justly because we are getting what we deserve for what we have done. The two men were just criminals. I mean, I mean just criminals. I mean, they were convicted criminals for doing something wrong, actually wrong. Justly convicted is what I mean. But this man has done nothing wrong. And as he was saying this, Jesus, please remember me when you are in the kingdom. And Jesus, Jesus while being hung up on the cross, pierced in his feet, nailed in his feet, nailed in his wrists, says to the other criminal, the other man on the, on the cross, I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. I, I still find that amazing that he said, you took time to forgive Forgive the people for what they what they were doing, what they were saying, and 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 he 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 just you're coming you're you're coming with me because you believe in me, because you believe in me you're you're going to uh, you're coming with me to heaven. It says uh, so that the two robbers, one on his right and one on his left, we're back to sorry back to Mark fifteen, verse twenty seven. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says. He was counted with the transgressors. Those who were passing by were insulting him with abusive and insolent language, wagging their heads, I guess shaking their heads, wagging their finger, that's what I think of, and as a, as a sign of contempt and saying, Ha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in, th in only three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also along the scribes were ridiculing and mocking him among themselves, saying, He saved others from death. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed, the King of Israel, now come down from the cross, so that we may see and believe and trust in him, those who were crucified with him, also insulting him. That other criminal that I was just talking about from Luke. When the sixth hour, hour noon, came across, darkness covered the whole land until the ninth hour, three o'clock p.m. And at the Ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. I'm going to screw this up. L-O-I, L-O-I, Lama. I'm totally going to mess this. Saba, which translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders heard him and said, Look, he is calling Elijah. Some ran and filled the sponge with sour wine to put on a reed and give him to a drink, saying, Let us see whether Elijah is coming coming to take him. But Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed out his last voluntary, sovereignly dismissing and releasing his body, his sorry, his spirit from his body in submission to his father's plan. And the veil of the Holy of Holies of the temples was torn in two from top to bottom. And the centurion who was standing opposite him saw the way he breathed his last breath, being fully in control, he said, truly, this was the man of God. This was the son of God. Now, the, while he was on the cross, he said, in, in another version, he says, uh, forgive them, for, for they don't know what they do. And, and, and he while he's being hanging on the cross, pierced, he says that, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And, and 
it just speaks of love. It speaks of love for us that he hung himself on the cross, that he took everything. He removed the barrier between us and God and 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 us believing in 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 him to to uh wipe away our sins and and take the final sacrifice for us, which I is again for me another demonstration demonstration of, of perfect love that and this is the part I know I've talked to some of the guys actually I talked to a lot of the fellas and it took me a long time too to, to understand and and even some some men, I remember there's a fella at work that I used to when I, I'm a welder by the way and and I was at a weld shop and there was this guy he was just an orangutan he was crazy he actually oddly enough him and I got along just fine but he found out I went to church, so he was like, no, 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 nobody screw with Steve because he is a church going man and he's got God on his side. I don't want any of that, I don't want any of that against me, he used to say all the time. And him and I would just talk, just chit chat, talk. And I and he used to say stuff like, uh, there's no way I'm going into heaven. I've done too many bad things. There's been too many things I've done. And that 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 he uh Christ wouldn't take him into heaven. And that's my wife calling my son. And uh the uh that's that's a lie. That's a lie and it's not true. And there is nothing. Christ died on the cross and it, all he asks is that we we believe in who he is and that we can be made new again. And and this is the part that 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 some I know some of the fellows that I've met, and I don't even remember even myself struggling with my past, thinking how how I couldn't forgive my past, and it's and it's a uh, and how how could it possibly be that Christ would forgive my past and forgive some of the things that I've done? But He does. You ask for forgiveness in His name. He died. The whole purpose of Him dying on the cross is forgiveness, and. He, he, uh, this is the part that, that if you're afraid that he might know stuff, he already knows. He knows what each and every one of us has done. There's no hiding, <clears throat> nice voice crack, there's no hiding from, from our past. But what you can be do is cleansed from your past. You can be washed clean from your past by believing in Jesus he took uh, other versions of the Bible says, you know, when the when the soldiers placed the crown on him, and I think it was Luke or, or, or other gospels, they talk about how he was whipped. He took those whippings, those whippings or those lashes as they call them, on his back for us. He he didn't sin. He wasn't sin. He was a perfect, he was a God made man. And he he was the perfect sacrifice. And the part that I, 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 I heard, you know, how many of us would do something like that? I keep thinking, how many of us would, it's amazing to think that through everything that, that we've gone through in our past, everything that we beat ourselves up over and there's a fella I really, really cared for. His name was James. I still care for him. He's passed away. He died in a he died in an overdose. And he was a nice, nice young man. And he couldn't he couldn't forgive himself of his past. He couldn't forgive himself of the actions that he had done to 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 earn a living. And he couldn't get past that. And and I Christ can help you get past that. Christ gets past that. He sees not who you were, but who you are. He sees he sees past a, who you think you are. I can remember thinking that I wasn't worthy of anything. I wasn't worthy uh, of of love. I wasn't worthy of anybody. Because I, I I thought I I didn't. I would look in the mirror and I wouldn't see. I wouldn't see anything worthwhile. I wouldn't see good. 
when we were being formed, God saw me, Steve, and said, I love this boy. I love this man. I love this man he's going to become. And he's looking at each and every one of you now. I'm, I'm, and he, each and every one of you, he knew that my buddy James, he knew my buddy Richard, he knew my buddy Kevin, before they were born. He knew our struggles, what our struggle, and, and he loved us. And he put us, and, and what was ever thought of us, what we ever thought of ourselves in the past, whatever people have thought of us, or how they've treated us in the past, is not a reflection of who we are. Who we are is a creation in Christ. And Christ felt that we were, he loved us so much. Here's the, here's the part, here's the part that's tough to kind of, if you, when you really grasp it, to wrap your head around. And, 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 and if you have any self-doubt in who you are, or if you're self-doubt in, in the worthiness of being loved, that's why he died on the cross, because he loved us. He died on the cross to heal us. He, he came for us to believe in, to heal us of our sins. And I want to read out of 2 Corinthians, again, amplified. It's chapter 5, verse 17. So it's, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is grafted and joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition, have passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakenings bring new life. That's it. There you have it. That's the purpose as to why you came. That's the purpose of believing in Jesus. That's the purpose of of become putting on the new man, putting on the new woman. I want to read it properly. Behold, new things have become behold, new things have come because spiritual awakenings bring a new life. A new life. This life of addiction, this life of of self-hatred, this life of self-loathing and unworthiness is gone, is done. And right now, I just want to pray with each and every one of you that I thank you. I thank you for this opportunity to, to share the gospel with the men of Helen and the ladies of, of mission. And I just reach reach I ask Lord Jesus that those that believe in you and believe that you died on the on the cross for them that the old is washed away and the new is the beginning in Jesus name I just ask for this and each and every one of you I pray that you that you've asked to follow Jesus and that you will continue to follow Jesus in each and put him in each and everything, every decision, every challenge, every struggle for the rest of your life, that you're not alone, that you are loved and that you are worthy of being loved. there's any doubt in any of that that this is a reminder through, through prayer and that Jesus died on the cross for each and every one of us and I thank you Lord God for your sacrifice and I thank you for your I thank you for Christmas to celebrate the birth of our Savior and I pray a blessing on each and every person listening in your precious name Lord God Thank you. Amen. So I hope everybody has a good night and a great week ahead of them. And uh, take care.
searching for it.